Red Sox reliever Joely Rodriguez got some injury news today that's going to have some major impacts on the start of this 2023 Red Sox season. <laughs> What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin. Just a heads up, we are going to be live on this channel this week, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to be going over the roster situation, opening day previews, really anything you guys want to talk about, we can talk about in there. Again, that is going to be Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern on this channel. Anyways, I would really hoped we wouldn't have to make another video like this until at least midway through the middle of this season, but yet here we are. Unfortunately, Joely Rodriguez was diagnosed with an injury that he sustained on Saturday. It was officially diagnosed. The news just came out this afternoon. So what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to break down this Joely Rodriguez injury news. We're going to talk about the actual injury itself. We're going to talk about what the timetable might look like before he can get back onto the field. And finally, we're going to talk about how this affects this Red Sox roster, what the Red Sox could do to replace Joely Rodriguez in his absence. But before we get into that, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you're new here we talk red Sox content almost every single day also make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well helps out a ton and it would mean a lot to me thank you all very much for clicking on this one let's get into it Okay, so let's start by breaking down the injury itself and what the timetable could look like to get Joely back out onto the field. If you guys do not remember, Joely was injured on Saturday during his relief appearance. He came off the field pretty quickly into that appearance, grabbing at the right side of his body. Lou Maloney said on the radio broadcast that he thought it could be an oblique strain and he was hoping it wasn't. The Red Sox had not said anything after that until this afternoon when they finally got the imaging back on Joely's side. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, Lou Merloni was 100% correct. Just a couple of hours ago, it was announced that Joely had been diagnosed with a grade two oblique strain. What does this mean for his timetable? Well, no one really knows exactly, to be 100% honest with you, or at least they aren't being upfront about it towards the media. Alex Cora, when asked about Joely Rodriguez's timetable, he basically said to Ian Brown per Twitter, he'll be back when he is healthy. Not exactly a set timetable on that at all. It's actually the furthest you could possibly be from a timetable but with injuries like this it can be a bit tricky because essentially what you're doing is tearing a muscle in your abdomen you don't realize how much you use your core until you injure your core i did a little research on oblique strange online and there wasn't an exact science to any of the answers given as to the actual timetable mlb actually had an article on it where they said a grade two strain a little bit on the more serious side could take three or four months until a player is back out onto the field other websites were saying it could be as little as six weeks until he's back onto the field. And then another one said it could be two months. So it really differs upon how bad the actual grade two strain was. Is it closer to grade one? Is it closer to grade three? And what does the individual player look like? How do they rehab, right? It's really case to case basis on how long it's going to take for Joely to get better. But in most people's opinions, from what I've read online, it's looking like it's at least going to be six weeks to three, four months for Joely to get back out onto the field. So yeah, not great news at all for the Red Sox. And this is actually kind of a little bit of a big injury here because if you take a look at this Red Sox bullpen, like we've talked about in the past a couple of times, actually, there are only two lefty options on this 26 man roster that were going to start the year in the Red Sox bullpen, Richard Blyer and Joely Rodriguez. Now you're down to just Richard Blyer, which could be a problem when it comes to lefty specialist work in the, in the first half of the year right? You don't want to overwork Richard Blyer super early in the year and have him tired by the end of it. And you probably aren't going to have one of your lefty starters, either Paxton or Sale, move into a sort of relief type role in the bullpen, right? That wouldn't make any sense at all. So the Red Sox are in a bit of a predicament here. How do they make up for the loss of Joely Rodriguez for a pretty extended period of time? Replacing Joely Rodriguez projected production for this Red Sox team could be a little bit difficult. Joely Rodriguez, if you take a look at his baseball savant page from last year, could have had a really great year for this Red Sox team. And he still can, right? It's not like he's going to be out for the entire year. But if you were the Red Sox, how do you replace that production in the Red Sox bullpen? Well, the first option is to take a look at the 40-man roster, right? Within the 40-man roster without having to make any moves or anything like that. Now, the only two candidates on this Red Sox 40-man roster that are lefties that aren't already in the rotation are Brandon Walter and Chris. 
Chris Murphy, who personally, I don't think are 100% major league ready yet. If you take a look at what they did in spring training, Brandon Walter had a 10.80 ERA this spring with no walks and eight strikeouts. Chris Murphy had a nine ERA with eight walks and five strikeouts. And I know it's just spring training and statistics are a little bit skewed because there's a smaller sample size and they do have a lot of potential to be legitimate pitchers at the major league level. I just don't think they're 100% there yet. Brandon Walter seems to get hit fairly hard. He did have a couple of unlucky games, but guys are figuring out how to square up the ball pretty well. And Chris Murphy just simply needs to work on location, right? Eight walks and five Ks just is not what you want to see, especially early on in spring training. So that could be a possible solution for the Red Sox. I just don't know if they are ready to break camp with this Red Sox team yet. Either one of them, right? In my opinion, looking within the 40 man roster isn't the actual ideal situation. It it is one that could work maybe, but I personally would want to give Murphy and Walter a little bit more time in the minor leagues before we consider that option. So what do the Red Sox do? Well, the other option is to look outside of the 40 man roster and the name that jumps off the paper to me would be Ryan Sheriff, who is a lefty. He's had time in major league baseball and so far this spring, he's looked pretty good. He has a zero ERA with no walks and five strikeouts in four and two thirds inning. The other option would be to call up one of these guys from double a like Mosqueda, who has a 1.69 ERA and 5.1 innings with seven strikeouts as well. So he's looking pretty good too. So there are some outside of the 40 man roster options, but in my opinion, the guy outside of the 40 man roster who should be taking over Joely Rodriguez spot on this 26 man roster is Ryan Sheriff, especially for the things that we mentioned, right? He's having a good spring. He has major league experience, which is huge because honestly, no one else that is a lefty that could come into a bullpen role that's either on the 40 man in the minors or a non-roster invitee has that essential major league experience. So in my opinion, Ryan Sheriff could be the perfect guy to take that over, which makes things kind of complicated, right? Because if you're not going to bring up Walter or Murphy, then you're going to have to make room for Ryan Sheriff on the 40 man roster. One of the easy things you could do, especially if you're thinking that Joely Rodriguez is going to be two months plus on the IL is put him on the 60 day IL. Then you can easily move Ryan Sheriff to the 40 man roster without having a DFA option or trade anyone. But if they believe that Joely Rodriguez could be ready to go before that two month mark, before that 60 days is up, you probably don't want to put him on that 60 day IL, meaning that you're going to have to make room for Ryan Sheriff on this 40 man roster. And that just adds to the pile of guys who should be on the 40 man roster who you are going to have to make room for. That adds them to the pile of Tapia and Alfaro. So unfortunately, if you aren't putting Joely Rodriguez on the 60 day IL, you're going to have some really tough decisions to make to get another lefty in this bullpen. The third and final option for the Red Sox is to ride it out with Rich. Richard Blyer for a couple of weeks to a month and hope that either Brandon Walter or Chris Murphy shows that they made some real true improvements in the first month of the minor league season and bring them up until Joely Rodriguez is good to go and back on this team, which again, I think they might need a little bit more time before we can do that. So it comes down to Ryan Sheriff in my opinion, but Overall, this is really, really tough for the Boston Red Sox. It makes decisions towards the end of spring training here a little bit more complicated. Obviously, you're losing a great personality in that bullpen and you're losing the potential for a really great arm. So let me know in the comment section down below, what would you do if you were the Red Sox right now? What would be your solution to Joely Rodriguez's injury? How are you supplementing his production in the Red Sox bullpen? Let me know all your thoughts on this Joely Rodriguez injury news down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. And I will see you Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time on this channel and in the red seat.